In today's episode, we're gonna be checking out the 40th anniversary Squire Stratocaster. So what I did, so you guys know where this guitar came from was, I reached out to the patrons and I said, is anyone interested in buying this guitar and having it shipped to the channel so we can check it out in this video? So let's talk about what it is. First of all, it's a Stratocaster that has a couple upgrades. And the upgrades are, of course, it has a binding on the neck. So we'll go from the headstock down. It has Cluson style gold tuning keys with a gold string tree. It has the 70s style headstock, so it's a little larger platform. This is all gloss polyurethane or urethane neck. Uh, so it's very shiny and feels very nice if you like a gloss neck. Now, like I said, if you, if you don't, I'm, I can understand why you're not gonna like this. It has binding around the entire neck to give it a beautiful look. It has an actual bone nut and it has block mother of pearl inlays with an Indian laurel fretboard. I was hoping for this model, maybe it'd be rosewood. And again, keep in mind, it's not because I have a particular interest in any type of wood. It's just obviously certain woods have different expenses. And when you see a Squire guitar Strat in the $500 range, you're hoping it's gonna have some more premium features. Uh, it has narrow tall frets. So uh, they're gonna be the width of like a vintage fret, but they're gonna be much taller. So they're, to me, they feel like medium frets. So if you're used to medium style frets, uh, these will feel pretty reminiscent. You have gold hardware, so you have a gold bridge. You have an aluminum pick guard, or scratch guard if you want to call it that. And what's interesting is it's not gold. It's kind of like a coppery bronze. Uh, it looks pretty good, but it, the screws look a little off. You have three Alnico fender design pickups. Uh, interesting, it doesn't say what Alnico it is. If it's two, if it's four, if it's five, it's eight. Uh, it just says it'll get you that fender sound. <laughs> I, I just thought it was very interesting that they were using such generic terms to explain such a uh, something they should be super proud of, right? It's the 40th anniversary guitar, but we'll get into that. Um, you have a five-way switch with three knobs. You have volume, tone, tone. We have two strap buttons. Something to note, I don't know if it was done on purpose or it was done on accident. This strap button is not in the center of this horn. It's pushed back a little bit, and I'm not sure why it was done that way. Like I said, it could be done like that on purpose. If you have this guitar, and you could let us know in the comments if yours is like this, if it's just like how they did this model, maybe there's a purpose. Maybe they figured out that that's where a strap sits better, or maybe somebody just wasn't centered up when they were drilling the hole. As features go, that's pretty much it. It doesn't come with any gig bag or case. It does come with an Allen wrench, of course, the tremolo arm and some paperwork, uh, and that's it. It has nine to 42 gauge strings. So with those specifications, let's get into the geeky stuff. So now that we're all tuned up, let's go ahead and see the neck relief. And you can see here, really good, nice and straight. So let's take a look at the action. And looking at the action, we are sitting in at two millimeters or 0 0.07. Quick, the guitar is sitting in at 25 and a half inches and we're gonna check the intonation and see how that is. And if you wanna see how I set the intonation and how you can too very quickly and easily, click the link down below to the video on how to intonate your guitar in three easy steps. So let's go ahead and check these nut slots. What we're gonna do is depress the third fret and see how much space between the first fret and the string. You can see almost none. Man, that's really good. Really good. Only thing is, they really, really cut this slots really deep. Not my preferred way of doing this, but even though these kind of look a little deep, they are working fine. Something interesting to note, I couldn't find it in the literature I was looking at, but I have confirmed that this is a dual action truss rod, which means you can make this neck pretty much do whatever you want. And that's very good at a guitar at this price point. We're definitely seeing these dual action truss rods in a lot of affordable guitars now. And let me tell you, these guitars probably need it more than any other guitars. It really pretty much doesn't guarantee that this can, guitar can be set up anywhere, but I'm just going to let you know it's a lot easier to correct issues that might be happening because of environment. So let's check these frets and see how well they leveled them. As I always point out in all these deep dives, you can use a fret rocker to check for high frets, but you can always just play each individual note. And if you notice a problem, confirm it with a fret rocker or a credit card. And these frets look great. All right, let's see how polished these frets are. And they're not that bad. Now, this is a good time to point out that they are obviously leveling these frets, crowning them, and then sanding them so they're smooth. They're not doing a high detail polish. So in my final thoughts, we'll have some discussion about that. It's time for the sock test. Let's see how well they did the front ends. And they're snagging. You can see there, 
a lot of snags. Really, the frets feel fine, but the ends are not very trimmed up. You can see right there. Let's do the base side. So let's do the base side. And same thing. You can see. So definitely a two and a half, a three maybe out of five. Really sad because you can definitely see where a lot of companies and no name companies just selling guitars on Amazon are selling much, much better workmanship than this at a lower price. Now what's important to mention about these frets is that even though they didn't pass the test, this neck did not shrink. That is not the problem. The problem is right here that the, the ends, oops, that the ends right here are just a little sharp. We're gonna take a fret and dress file, which is rounded, okay? We're not even gonna tape it off, and all we're gonna do is just come here at an angle, just like this, see here, come down against this, see how it slides nicely without, that's it, super light. Do all, okay? And I like to go out, and then in, out, and in, out, then in, and so on. And now we're gonna do the other sides. Same thing, we're gonna take the rounded side down so it doesn't hurt anything. Just run it here, and like I said, just kind of like a little tilted angle, brush it up, out, in, just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and check it now. And a couple snags here and there, you see, little light ones, but much better. Let's do it one more time. And same thing, couple little marks here and there. You can see where I think I missed one or two little spots. But overall, a much bigger improvement just from removing the barbs. Looking at the neck, a couple things. We have a one-piece maple neck with gloss finish. This guitar is made in Indonesia, and it has Kluson style tuning keys. I say style because they're not actually branded Klusons. You have, of course, the binding on the sides, and then with the Indian laurel fretboard. This is probably done for aesthetics. This looks like walnut right here. And so there's a walnut, even though there's not a skunk stripe in the back, they did walnut here. My guess is just again for aesthetics to make it look nice, and it does. Now I mentioned that these frets were listed as narrow tall, and I have confirmed that although they are narrow, like a vintage fret wire, they are tall and they are like medium frets. So these are going to feel pretty much just like the traditional Fender made in Mexico, made in USA fret wire that you're seeing now on current guitars. Something to show you on the back plate, it is gold. It says Squire 40th anniversary, which is nice. We do the a handshake where you grab it right here, but obviously this is a fender. And so uh, of course it's not very good. It pokes you right there. This is um, not the best handshake. So you can see when you hold here, it's kind of a little thick. It's hard to put your fingers to the other side of the fretboard, but you know, come on. We all love strats and it's inherent in that design. And we're gonna confirm right now that it is a nine and a half inch radius fretboard. The fretboard is slightly rolled, so it doesn't look like they intentionally rolled it over like they do uh, when they're making the USA fenders and they kind of really want it to feel broken in. It just feels not sharp on the edge. I mean, it's more than adequate, and because it's a plastic binding, it doesn't have a harsh corner, so I'm going to say slightly rolled fretboard edge. All right, so this guitar is sitting in with a C profile on the uh, neck and on the 12 fret. Definitely the C profile, so this is definitely a C-shaped neck. And it is 42 millimeters wide, which is 1.653. So again, definitely more narrow than a fender. Let's take the 12 fret and your 12 fret is gonna be 2.024 or 51.41 millimeters. So again, a uh, very small kind of more narrow neck than what you see traditionally on fender. At the first fret, we are at 20.63 millimeters thick or 0.812 and at the 12th fret we are 0.907 or 23.04 millimeters thick. Let's check the pickups. We're running a guitar cable into the output jack. We're using the two clamps. We're pointing the ground to the shaft of the of the guitar cable and then of course hot to the tip and right now the bridge is showing at 6.45 and of course the middle pickup is at 6.08k and the neck is at 
5.75K. So definitely going for a vintage style pickup with the amount of wire they're putting on there. That's only one part of the story. Let's look at the inductance. We're looking at the bridge pickup at 2.49 Henry's, the middle pickup at 2.25 Henry's, and the neck pickup at 2.06 Henry's. This is important because the lower that number, the brighter the pickup's going to sound. Obviously, that means these pickups are definitely going for the vintage Strat bright tone. I also wanted to get out my Tesla meter and see if I could figure out what these uh, magnets are. And based on what I'm seeing here, I'm 90% sure these are Alnico 5 magnets, which are brighter than Alnico 2s. So based on the resistance I was getting, I'm going to say these pickups are about 8,000 turns of 42 gauge wire, putting them in that 50s era vintage Strat tone, especially with the inductance reading and now this. Uh, so we're going to probably hear some really cool vintage sounding Strat pickups here. Well, let's take a look at the electronic. First, I just want to point out there's no shielding in this cavity that I can see. Sometimes they can shield it and then paint over it. That makes it a little difficult, but I, uh, I took and took a little file and marked right there. I couldn't see anything underneath there. Um, there's nothing really for me to check with a multimeter, so there's just no way to tell. Uh, and then right here is the, the bare wood, so we can see that the wood is here. Now, this is the metal plate that we were talking about. Uh, what we have is a basic PCB uh, board. Uh, switch. These are my least favorites. And of course, some small um, potentiometers. These are 250Ks with a 0.22 microfarad capacitor. Um, these are alpha pots, it looks like. Yep, these are alpha pots. Now, normally, I don't have a problem. Like I said, sometimes they point out the dime ones are bad and the, the bigger ones are good. To me, it's not a quality thing and how good they are. It's how they feel. These feel different than the bigger ones. The bigger ones feel more substantial to me. But quality-wise, these, these could last just as long as any big ones. Don't let somebody tell you just because this is a small uh, potentiometer that somehow it's bad. Uh, Alpha makes the pots for $3,000 amps just as well. These pickups, you can see here, we have plastic inject molded bobbins. This is definitely reminiscent of what we used to see in the old USA standard Stratocasters. Not the main Mexicos because those had a ceramic uh, magnet on the back. These are actually Alnico slugs. So these are magnets right here. These are magnetized each slug. There's not a bar here. Looking at the output jack, it's pretty good. It's not a switchcraft part or anything, but the quality is pretty good. There's a little bit of solder work there I'm not impressed with, but it's doing the job. But the quality of this, if you look here at a standard switchcraft one, isn't far off. I'm not saying it's the exact same in quality. Let's do it this way. What I am saying though, is that it's pretty darn close. Looks pretty good. So not bad at all. So that's pretty good. For reference, this guitar is 7.73 pounds, but I've seen them as high as nine pounds and as light as seven pounds or on the high six pound range. This body is made of Nieto, which is like a mahogany type wood. So it can be pretty heavy or pretty light depending on probably its moisture content or its density when it was cut. Be prepared if you're looking at these guitars, they can range from anywhere from seven pounds to nine pounds. Looking at pricing, you can see these guitars come in at $499 and come in a few different colors and versions. Comparatively speaking, you can look at the Sire guitars that are also made in Indonesia for about $100 more with a roasted maple neck. You can look at made in Mexico Fender Strats for about $350 more. Or you can look at the E-Art guitars that are almost half the price with stainless steel frets. Or look at a Squire Classic Vibe and save about $70 and lose just a few of the detail features from this guitar. All right, let's do some sound samples. First, we'll be using the Paul Reed Smith Zenzera in the clean channel with a little bit of reverb, and it's 20 watts through a stock 112 inch speaker, mic'd up with an SM57 into a Neves 88M interface into my computer. And of course, I'm also running a room mic. <laughs> It sounds good. I mean, it sounds like a Strat. That's position four, so that's gonna be your neck and middle. It's got a very light sound to it. 
Back to that uh, neck. Now the neck and middle. You know what it does? It sounds, does that quacky thing I like, but it does sound a little thinner than I like. Okay, middle position. This is actually a position I use quite a lot. Yeah, it's weird that the middle and the neck sound kind of thin. I mean, they sound good, but that middle. Okay, now we're gonna have the middle and the bridge. Yeah, it's a little bit of snap to it. Yeah, it's cool. Um, let's go to the bridge. That's good. So, so we have the tone control here is attached to the bridge pickup. And the tone control in the middle is attached to the uh, neck and middle. So that's your wiring configuration. Little scratch. Got a scratchy pop. Yeah, hold on. Scratchy pop. So let's fix it. For that bad potentiometer that was crackling, we're just going to use some deoxid. You can use electronic contact cleaner. I just like deoxid because I like the controllable adjust spray. I keep it on low. You can see here, right there, right in that little line right there, see that little section right there? You're just going to put the straw right in there and just go. Just go, let it go in there. Once you do that, flip it over, let it work in, and you'll feel it, like already I can tell, just really nice and loose. And you may want to do it again, it won't hurt anything, but it's a, uh, it's fine, and if you get deoxid on anything like here, just wipe it all up with a dry cloth. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch to some overdrive. So I switched the Sunzera over to the overdrive setting, and I also have the bright switch on, same SM57, same everything else, and uh, let's check out the guitar and see how it sounds with overdrive. And we're gonna be using the neck pickup. Neck and middle. Wow. Okay, the middle. Now we got the bridge and middle. Okay, and then of course the bridge. Great.
great. Yeah, that's great. So what are my final thoughts on this guitar? Well, it's actually a really impressive guitar. I was shocked. I love the way it looked. I love the color. I love the block inlays. I love the binding. I was really impressed with the pickups. They sounded really good. Uh, for this price point, there's not a whole lot of things to improve. It would be nice if it had a five-way mechanical switch like a, a Made in Mexico or a Made in USA Strat. But other than that, it was fine. It will do the job. One thing I, I want to do before I send it back is uh, correct basically three things that I'd like to improve. So first, I'm going to go ahead and put in some conductive shielding paint in the cavity. Now you can use a tape, but I like to use conductive shielding paint. The other thing I want to do is polish those frets. Although they were fine once I took care of those barbs, they played great. I'm going to go ahead and just put a detailed polish on them. I'm going to use my polishing wheel on my Dremel. It works great. The other thing you have to do when you do it is you want to use painter's tape and tape off the entire fretboard. However, I have a metal guard, and if you need one like this, I believe Music Nomad is making one that looks similar to the one I've been using for the last couple years, so you might want to check that one out. And if it helps, every time I get a new polishing wheel, the first thing I do is use my little screwdriver or something that's shaped like a fret to make a little groove in the center of it so it rides across the fret perfectly. I just like having it the shape of a fret. It works great that way. The last thing I want to make sure I do is upgrade the tuning keys. So I bought a set of Cluson style locking keys off Amazon for 40 bucks. They're really good. I checked them out. I'm really impressed. And I was able to put them on in five minutes. Basically, all you want to do is make sure you match up whether or not you have a furl, like a press in furl for the uh, shaft of your tuning keys. Or if you have a nut, this had the furls. So that's an easy thing to exchange out. These are direct replacements, and like I said, it's pretty easy. So with locking keys, some conducting shielding paint, and polish the frets up, I think he's going to have a fantastic guitar. And I'll put a new set of 9-gauge uh, strings on there as well. I want to thank you guys uh, for supporting the channel. If you're not a subscriber, please consider it. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does a huge dividend to the channel. And as always, I just want to thank you guys for your time. Till the next time, know your gear.